The infamous black-eyed children. Truly the stuff of nightmares. Their jet black eyes, lulling, unsuspecting victims to let them into their abode, to do who knows what. Join me and Black Eyed Blonde as we learn more about these terrifying creatures. Don't let them in. Usually when you hear of black eyed children knocking on people's door, it's some schmo living on a farm in the middle of nowhere, but this was not the case. I live in the suburbs, with neighbors all around and cars driving by at all hours of the night. And though I believe in the paranormal, I never thought I would have the encounter I had. It happened earlier this year around Thanksgiving 2015. Like any holiday, there were lots of neighbors hosting parties with their families and random kids running around and playing outside, which I guess is one of the reasons I was as foolish as I was that day. The sun was just going down, and I was home alone watching TV and eating some turkey, and that's when I heard a knock. I looked at the clock, and it was almost 7.30. Thinking it was one of the neighbors, I swung the door open without even looking, and there stood two kids. One of them was a little boy with a baseball cap on, blue jeans, and a jersey. The other was younger and shorter, but with no cap and looking towards the floor. I looked at them and asked if they needed anything, and the older boy chirped, Yes, we just need to come in to get our baseball from your yard. As soon as he said that, a chill went down my spine, and I had a horrible feeling that I should not let these boys in. I looked at him, studying his face, and... In the back of my head, I knew something was wrong with him, but I just couldn't place it. He must have noticed my hesitation because he exclaimed, Come on, ma'am, we just want our ball back. And that's when I realized this child had no whites in his eyes. I was kind of shocked and flabbergasted. At first, I thought they were black contact lenses. I looked over at his brother, and I noticed he had the same eyes. My face must have given it away, because as soon as I looked back to the leader, his eyes filled with hatred, and his cool smile turned into an evil smirk, and I swear he stood taller and more confident, staring into my eyes, and that smile that hinted he knew what I was thinking. At that moment, the atmosphere changed from what I perceived at the beginning of the encounter as two normal and innocent boys standing in front of me wanting their ball back to two inhuman beings wanting to invade my home and create havoc onto my life. I just stared at him as he smirked. The smaller boy stood firmly and confidently on two feet and he got taller, and he also stared. After about thirty seconds of staring, the smaller boy broke the silence. Come on, ma'am. Just let us in. And the way he said it, I could tell something changed in him, because he spoke with such conviction in his voice. I stared at him and he smirked, all knowingly, and I didn't know what to say. In my head, I wanted to scream and call them out, tell them they were demons from another world and to get off my porch. But at the same time, I began to wonder about my safety. If I did that, it could be worse for me. I mean, what if instead of just asking to come in, they force their way into my home and my life? What if they get violent? I thought to myself, this charade we're playing by pretending this isn't what it is. If I don't play this game anymore, it could be detrimental to my own health and well-being. I made the decision to keep playing and I looked at the smaller of the two beings and said, Yeah, I'll get it for you. And grabbed the door and slammed it in their face and began walking. I turned on all the lights and sat on my couch with my feet pulled up to my chin and I began to shake and rock back and forth and listen, but I heard nothing. No laughter outside. No children playing. No shuffling at my door. The world fell at a standstill as I sat there silently in the fetal position and then I heard a slow knock at my door. I immediately stopped rocking and stood still, listening intently as another knock fell upon the door. I didn't know what to do. I stared at the door and listened as another knock came through the door. I refused to get up. My body so stiff and my arms so tightly wrapped around my legs I could feel the veins in my arms pumping in blood. 
and the slow knocks continued for at least two minutes, followed by silence so ear-piercing I wondered if I lost my hearing. The entire night went by, and I sat in my living room, not knowing what to do. I don't know when I dozed off, but I woke up around 2 a.m., and the lights were off in my house. The TV screen that was once on Comedy Central now filled with black and white static. I don't know how, but something was inside of my home. This took place in June 2015. I woke up around 3ish with my puppy chihuahua Bootsy sitting on my chest whining at me, looking around frantically. I figured She'd needed to go out to pee, so I grabbed my phone and looked at the time. 3.13am. What was weird was that both my dogs were very regular about their potty breaks. But when you gotta go, you gotta go. My other dog was staring intently into the living room, not moving, just looking. I then hear a tap on the front door. Also, strange, my dogs made no noise. Bootsy is softly whining as she followed me down the hall. I'd left my phone right next to the sofa in our bedroom in order to get the leashes to take the dogs out. When I opened, I saw two children. I assume between the ages of five and six wearing some kind of greyish black tunic that almost looked like it was a dress it was so big. The girl spoke right off the bat. Hi, we need to come in. As I had just woken up, I was a little dumbfounded and all that I could say was, "Uh huh? And then she repeated the statement. Where are your parents? I asked. And the boy broke in before I could finish. Hi. We need to come in. Now. Then I started to observe them a little more closely, as they were standing with the screen door half opened. They had porcelain looking skin, almost paper white. They looked like twin doll figures and the androgynous look about them, other than their haircuts and their eyes, felt very strange, void. In fact, upon closer inspection, their eyes were completely black. I don't know if it was the lack of light or what. It was the boy's tone that really started to alert me, and my mind started to scream danger. Hi, we need to come in now. I was, for some reason, about to open the door for them to get my phone that I had left on the sofa to let them call their parents when my other dog, Mabel, starts urinating all over herself. Behaviour that I have never seen and is whining so badly about something I'd never seen her do that. She's fearless. Bootsy is a whiny dog, but I'd never gotten that out of Mabel. So I slightly snapped out of what I was doing and just looked back at them. They had both taken a step closer into the doorframe now to see them right in front of my face and their eyes, just like black pools of knowledge and venom. Then I backed out. My mind was overwhelmed. I had no idea what was going on. Then I blacked out. My mind was overwhelmed. The next thing I know, my girlfriend came out and was asking me why I was passed out on the floor. I felt like bullets were shot into my head and I just wanted to go back to bed. And she questioned me why I had just fallen asleep on the floor. When I sleep on the couch, it means that we have problems. But the fact that I was on the floor was beyond us. I then noticed the time. It was time for her to get to work. She worked at the state capitol, and they started work at 7am. 
I had lost a bit of time between whatever happening and her waking. My mouth tasted so metallic. I went to get a drink and stepped in dog pee. I didn't think anything about it until next morning, because that was the only real physical evidence I have of it not being a dream. I remember my dog wildly pissing all over the place like she wanted to paint the room yellow. Wasn't on any mind altering drugs, or have ever had anything like that happen to me before. Strange for sure, and I did get the feeling at the end, that they meant me harm in some way. In what way, I don't exactly know. But that was the only time that I'd ever blacked out in my life. It has left me with so many questions. And I wish someone had an answer for me. What did I see that night? And who are these black-eyed children? Reading the stories, I had always been a skeptic. Stories, alleged first-hand experiences, hauntings, possessions. They are all well and good for a quick chill, a cheap thrill, something I read to get my heart rate up. Getting scared can be fun sometimes, as long as you don't overdo it. Just a little something silly to get worked up about. In my lurking in books, and on numerous sites on the internet, credible or not, I have come across many a story or account about ghosts, demons, the Jersey Devil, you name it. Recently I have found my way into stories about B.E.K., or black-eyed kids. No, these children did not get a black eye from a fight. I don't believe there would be a soul out there with the backbone to try and attack these kids. No. B.E.K.'s are kids. If that was not straightforward enough, usually, from all the accounts I have read, in their teenage years, if they even physically age at all, their eyes are pitch black. No pupils, no corneas, no white showing at all. Pitch black. They have olive skin and wear run-of-the-mill clothing, as in hoodies. However, in a non-physical sense, they always bring with them an overwhelming sense of fear and dread. They are all intriguing, and when approached by them, again, from all the accounts I've come across, it's like you are in a slight hypnosis, though you quickly snap out of it when your instincts take over, usually as you meet their eyes. Then... There are the theories. The theories about what these BEKs might be. These theories range from lost souls, to alien human hybrids, and even to vampires. Though the latter may be an extreme stretch to link the BEK to the current social infatuation of vampires found commonly in young persons. In light of all this, I have always been a very fact-based person. If its existence was not apparent, or the existence of the thing in question was not testable and verifiable to me, it did not exist. However, one night, one long, terrifying night, which still haunts me to this very day, showed me the proof and required me to open my eyes and mind. My story begins when I left my mum's house. I had gone over to visit because my father, her husband of 63 years, recently passed away and Mum wasn't taking it too well. I knew she needed support from her loved ones, and I was more than willing to go visit and keep her company, but it was getting late. My mum lives in the suburbs, tidy lawns, plenty of neighbors, paved roads, and even though it was near 11 p.m. when I left, the streets were extremely lit by the streetlights, who always had your safety and ease of mind at heart. These lights only lit the road, though, and glancing across the street, the houses were cast in eerie shadow. Even a rather safe, charming little neighborhood can seem spooky and uninviting when cast in shadow. I admit, I was terribly chilled. Sliding into my car, I revved the engine and waved to my mother who was standing in the doorway, wrapped comfortably in a warm shawl. She waved back, her old and fragile arm shaking. I saw her mouth, be careful and I smiled, backing out of the driveway. I turned out of the neighborhood, deciding to take the back way, the shorter way, home tonight. In hindsight, that might have not been a good idea. I live a significant ways away, out in the middle of the country in the old farmhouse I grew up in. 
which my father had left in my name when he and Mum moved out into a place smaller, more easy for care and affordable, and social. He, my father, had always told me growing up, Don't go out at night and always beware the devils. He was a strong believer in anything and everything paranormal, a very superstitious man, and I always had to resist the urge to laugh at his words, but I knew he meant well. Driving down the dark country roads, there were no streetlights, and the half-assed paved road was cracked and filled with potholes. The fields on either side of the road were empty, just blank stretches of overgrown grass and untended shrubbery. The dark outline of the trees of the woods could be seen looming all the way across the fields on the shadowy horizon. One might even have seen a deer or two once in a while in those fields, but not tonight. The moon offered little light, as the sky rolled with dark threatening clouds, ready to burst with rain or storm at any moment. Sure enough, a few moments later, the low grumble of thunder sounded heavy and long. However, no rain fell just yet, much to my pleasure. I hate driving at night and in the rain, and putting those two together would end badly. I just knew it. Accompanied by the occasional roll of thunder, I started to feel a bit anxious. I can't explain it. I just felt shaken up, probably because it was night and it could start raining. Or maybe I had been reading too many ghost stories and legends and tonight seemed to reflect the mood of the stories I read almost obsessively. To try and calm myself, I flicked on my old car's radio and turned the old-fashioned knob back and forth, slowing down a bit as I attempted to find a station that came in clearly. Nothing doing. Weird. There was a broadcasting tower right near here. It usually came in perfectly. Clear as day. But still nothing. The white noise and static of the blank stations was doing nothing to appease my anxiety. I gripped the steering wheel tightly as more thunder boomed from the sky. Aggravated, I forcefully shut off the radio, gritting my teeth. Glancing down at the dashboard, I noticed I was nearly out of gas. Groaning, I searched the road for a sign for gas. As I was scanning the side of the road, I noticed from the corner of my eye two figures walking on the side of the road shrouded in shadow. They were walking slowly. One turned around, walking backwards, his or her thumb sticking out. I felt compelled to pull over, give them a ride, and I found my hands turning the wheel slightly, but I pulled back, realizing how stupid it would be of me to accept two random strangers into my car in the middle of the night on a back country road. I sped up and passed them, trying not to look at them. As I did so, though, I felt oddly intrigued by them. As I focused on the road ahead, it started drizzling, dropping my mood another level or two. Along with the rain, the thunder seemed louder, closer as the storm moved in. A few seconds passed until I gave in to my compulsion to look at the two figures, and I glanced in my rearview mirror. It seemed as if the two were walking faster, and the one no longer had his thumb out, but... It had to be my imagination. How would I be able to tell if they were walking faster or not? It was rainy and dark. Looking back at the road, I almost missed a sign that alerted me of a gas stop up ahead. A sigh of relief passed my lips and I slowed down, looking for my indication of the stop, pushing the thought of the two figures from my head. Soon, I was pulling into the gas station slowly as the rain started to pick up. The store was closed, but luckily they had a 24-hour gas pump service. That was good for me, as if they had not, I'd have run out a few more miles down the road. I shut off my car and hesitantly shuffled out of the metal shell and glanced over my shoulder, still not being able to shake that nervous feeling that had manifested inside of me earlier that night. I stood under the light of the overhang, trying to figure out how to work the pump which seemed so overcomplicated in the dim light and with my mind not being able to focus on this simple task. The rain picked up more, heavier and louder against the concrete of the gas stop as I finally was able to get the pump into my car, forcing my hand to stop its shaking. 
I had a horrible feeling that my shaking wasn't just because of the bittery, cold night air. Suddenly, the overhang lights of the gas stop started flickering wildly, a couple going out altogether. It seemed as if the temperature dropped 20 degrees in a few seconds as I glanced around, a sinking feeling starting to blossom in my stomach. As if in slow motion, I turned around, facing back towards the road, the long, lonely road, and I saw what I expected to see there. But even as much as I knew what I'd see, I still felt the drop of my stomach, the color draining from my face, and I breathed a sharp, cold breath forcefully as it almost caught in my throat. Across the street, the two figures were standing, facing me. They started crossing the street slowly but surely, and I fumbled with the gas pump. It had only been a few moments, but it seemed as if the gas pump was taking its precious time. I was shaking hard now, as thunder boomed once more, and I looked back up. The figures were now at the entrance to the gas stop, and my breath was quick and shallow as I blindly shoved the pump back into its holder, not being able to tear my eyes away from the figures. As they drew closer, I became more frantic, even though, now as they walked into the flickering light of the overhang, I saw they were just two teenagers. They looked ragged and frigid and soaked from the rain. I straightened up a bit, still terrified, but another compulsive feeling, similar to the one I experienced in the car, was bubbling, and I felt obligated to talk to these two, though I insisted to myself to just drive away, not to risk anything. They were extremely close now, at the next pump when I slid into my car, shaking wildly, and fumbled for my keys, cursing myself as I dropped them on the floor. Leaning down, I swiped them up and sat back up. A cold, sickening feeling as I came face to face with one of the teens, who had his hands on my window, knocking slowly but forcefully. I rolled down the window a bit, just a bit, no bigger than to allow maybe a small child's hand through. Before I spoke, he spoke first. The other figure was standing in the background, still, but I could see something of a grin there on her pale face. Can you give us a ride into town? We missed the bus and don't have a ride. He spoke slow, and something about his voice made me shiver. A cold chill swept down my spine and I opened my mouth, but no sound came out. Clearing my throat, I glanced at the dashboard and the keys in my hand. Ah, uh, I I'm sorry, but I'm not going into town, I stuttered, keeping my eyes down, not at the kids. However, the teenager knocked harder and made me jump a little, as he insisted another time for a ride. I told him no once more and looked up trying to seem intimidating, which seems silly, trying to seem intimidating to a child. But a horrible, chilling sight greeted me. I looked the kid right in the eyes and gasped sharply, my back hitting my seat as I went to back away. He had eyes. Oh, he did. But they were blacker than the night. Pitch black. No discernible pupils and no white whatsoever showing. Pure, black, deep, brooding, and surprisingly intriguing. But my fear got the better of me, and I quickly turned the key and my engine revved to life. I thanked God, which I had never, ever done before tonight. My car had not stalled, and I went to pull away, and the kid banged on my window with a pale fist, screaming for a ride. I took off speedily down the road, apologizing to my father again and again I had laughed at him, never took his warning seriously. After a few more minutes, I pulled into my driveway and right onto my lawn, in front of my porch. I didn't want to spend any more time outside than I already had and jumped from the car, leaving the door open and ran inside, slamming the door and locking it, even going as far to put a chair in front of the door in case someone, or something, tried to get in. Sinking into the chair in front of the door, I shivered uncontrollably and started to cry, hiding my face in my hands as two dark figures stood at the end of my driveway. Black-eyed kids, I'd be lying if I told you that I didn't know 
about these black-eyed kids before this happened to me. Late summer last year, I definitely did. Now in the moment, the idea never crossed my mind. But afterwards, hell yes. And the thought led to all kinds of regret. I realise it's stupid. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you about my neighbourhood. I live in a poor part of town. A bit of a ghetto. A bit of El Barrio. A bit of the lower economic class of a cross-section of races. It's LA. The apartment complex spans a short block. It's dusty brown like the desert we live in. It's got two pools and lots of Mexican children and for the most part, a pretty friendly population. I am a destitute writer, trying to make it into Hollywood, so I spend my free time writing. When this happened, I was working mostly in the mornings and afternoons. I would get home, hit the gym, and then settle for an evening in front of the computer. It's pretty common for the evenings in the summer to be chaotic around our apartment complex. Kids playing in the pool, the ice cream man pushing his cart up and down the sidewalk, women talking outside doing the laundry. You know, nice, low income but pleasant, like a mixed race 21st century version of a 50s sitcom. And people will knock on your door, sometimes to borrow something. I cook, so neighbours pop by to find out the origins of the great aromas wafting through my kitchen window, sometimes for a little help working on a broken down car, but mostly it's the kids selling candy bars or Christmas wrapping paper, or jittery tweakers selling magazine subscriptions, or old Mexican men selling bootleg DVDs, and lots of Jehovah's Witness. Because it's hot out here, I leave my windows open, the AC isn't cheap, and I've got no money. This means, though I can't see anywhere from where I sit and work, I can hear them very clearly as they walk up to my door. When I hear someone knock, I answer it. Besides buying the occasional candy bar, I smile politely and decline, wish them a nice day, and send them off on their way. No big deal. This evening it was quiet, which was strange in of itself, and I should have at least been able to hear the distant sound of ranchero music. I heard a couple of people walk up to my door. I'm not the first apartment in my courtyard, so usually I hear the salespeople as they knock on my neighbours' doors and work their way around to me. But not this time. Whoever it was, walked right up to my door and knocked. I got up to answer it, reaching for the door handle, when a chill went through my body like I have never experienced. A cold tightness in my chest, I halted my hand movements towards the door handle and placed it flat on the door as if it were feeling far heat from a fire. I have a peephole on my door, but it never crossed my mind to use it. I stood there, with my hands flat on the door, and listened. They knocked again. I don't scare easy, and I wasn't exactly afraid, but I was having a visceral experience all over my body. A base fear reaction just like I could hear them. They had heard me move to the door, and they knew that I was inside. Who is it? I said. A boy's voice answered. We need to use your phone. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I started laughing. I stress laugh when I'm in pain or under pressure. They heard me laughing, and neither of us moved for about a minute. A really, really long minute. Finally, they walked away. Not to any of the other doors in the eight doorways within 15 feet, 
not to ask anyone else. Before they could have gone more than a dozen yards, curiosity reasserted itself, and I yanked the door open, running after them to see who it was and where they were going. The courtyard out of my complex was completely empty. There's no way they could have disappeared so quickly. Afterwards, I thought the experience fit the stories of black-eyed children, and I kicked myself for not opening the door, coming face to face with one. It would have been cool, right? But then I remembered the feeling, my skin crawling, and the certain knowledge to me that in that moment, there was no way in hell I was going to open that door. Most people say they can sense when something is about to happen. Something feels off or wrong. Maybe, if that were the case, this never would have occurred. Maybe I wouldn't be typing this story. It was late, but I couldn't sleep. Something in my mind was stuck in the on position and refused to budge. After an hour of tossing around under my sheets, I accepted the futility and moved myself into the front room. It had to be about 2 a.m., the television volume on low, playing some older sitcom I was barely aware of. I was on the couch, sleepily watching the ceiling fan. I was pretty calm, despite the late hour and my fatigue. It was the knock on my front door that jarred me from my position. I wasn't really suspicious as much as curious. I lived in a relatively well-off neighborhood. I had no reason to be scared, at first. I looked through the peephole. Nothing. I opened the door, leaving the chain lock intact. Nothing. I gave up and returned to my place on the couch. I think this time, I dozed off, putting the knock down to my restless mind. Really, I had made it up, a figment of my imagination. That is, until it happened again. It was maybe 3 a.m. by the time I opened the door. I was met by something you all know, and fear. At the time... I had no idea. All I saw in front of me were two sad, helpless children. Hello? The first one said. We are lost. It's so late. Can we please come in? We have to call our parents. He seemed so articulate, so smart for a child. He was dressed in such snappy attire it didn't once cross my mind something might be wrong. I just didn't notice the eyes. Somehow... My mind skipped right over that detail. The younger one, a girl, stood with her head down. She was dressed down compared to her brother. She wore her dark hair and pigtails, and it was just so long. Something in me was screaming to shut the door, yet I resisted. Two small children alone with no help? I must help them. It was the only moral and ethical decision. While you turned them away... I invited them inside. At first, they seemed surprised. They had been expecting to have the door shut in their face. They couldn't remember the last time it had been so easy. They won't hurt you, I promise. They're just lonely. They have no parents to take care of them. We must help these poor, black-eyed children. They're just lost, alone, and afraid. Besides... You see much better with eyes as black as theirs. You would understand if you let them in, too. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I want to give a huge thank you to Black Eyed Blonde for helping me in this video. If you enjoyed these stories, she has plenty more where that came from, as her name would suggest. So why not check out her channel and subscribe, using the links appearing on screen soon or in the description. As always, your comments and ratings would be very much appreciated to help me with the algorithm. So if you liked the video, I'd love it if you could let me know in the comments section. If you want your story read on my channel, send it over to my email which you can find in the description. And don't forget to follow my Twitter and Instagram for some cool behind the scenes stuff. But for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome.
Don't forget to check out Black Eyed Blonde. And I'll see you in the next one.